What is up YouTube XX Solutions here and today I am bringing you a tutorial and this is on how to install Mac OS X El Capitan on a virtual machine. Now obviously I am using Windows 10 here and you can use Linux and still use VMware Workstation Pro and still gain access to Mac OS El Capitan. So El Capitan is basically the latest version of Mac OS X 10 and I've seen quite a lot of tutorials out there but I thought I'd make one myself to clarify a few things and you know just to kind of share with you guys. Now you're probably wondering why the hell would you want to do this now the reasons why I would like to do this is one to make a video for you guys on how to obviously install it and use it and two to actually use certain tools within the Mac OS X that aren't available on Windows so let's jump straight into it so the first thing you're going to want to do is basically just download everything that is in the description below I'll try and provide absolutely everything that I include in this video if I miss anything out then be sure to comment below and I'll try and add it in the description as soon as possible there is one downside I can't show you how to get VMware Workstation Pro completely free because obviously that will be copyright and I'll probably get sued for that etc etc so what you can do is go into the description below and download the VMware Workstation station pro trial for 64-bit or 64-bit Linux depending on what operating system you're on and then there are obviously other ways of getting the actual product key etc etc I'm not going to go into detail but if you do need help with getting it activated then please message me on Skype and I'll try and help you as best as I can so once you have VM Workstation Pro installed and fully configured and all the drivers are installed for it you can go ahead and open this so if you've never used VMware Workstation before it's pretty simple I know VirtualBox is quite a little bit different but again I'm only using VMware Workstation because this is what I know how to use but I may do an update video on how to do this inside of VirtualBox. So as you can see here I do have OS X 10.11 already made but I'm obviously going to create a new one to show you how it all works. So the first thing you're going to want to do is hit file and create a new virtual machine. Make sure you're using the typical recommended as it's easiest. Click next and choose I will install the operating system later. Click next and on this setup screen you'll see all of the different operating systems. Now you may not see Apple Mac OS X. Now the reason for this is because you need an unlocker. So if you do not see this, go into the folder that I've provided that's called VMware 12 series, go inside here and right click and run the win-install bat file as administrator. This is completely safe, completely clean, and this will basically unlock Mac OS X 10 to work inside of VMware. Once you've run that, go ahead and reopen it and we can create this once again. So I'm gonna go click next. I will install the operating system later. I'm gonna choose the Apple Mac OS X and we're gonna choose the latest version, which is OS X 10.11. Hit next and we're gonna give it a name. I'm just gonna call it YouTube this tutorial and you can save it to wherever you want I'm just gonna leave it in the default location which is Jack documents virtual machines and YouTube hit next and we're gonna choose store virtual disk as a single file you can change this to whatever you want I'm gonna leave it by default as 40 gigabytes hit next and click finish once you've done that, what we're going to want to do is edit the virtual machine settings. So we're going to go in here and I'm going to change the RAM to four gigabytes because it runs a lot, lot smoother. Obviously, depending on what your hardware is, I'm using 16 gigabytes of DDR3 RAM and four gigabytes is plenty. Obviously, if you have, say, eight gig, then you could probably bump it down to two. It just depends on your hardware. Same goes for the processors. I'm going to change this to four processors as I have an Intel Core i7 processor. But again, depending on your hardware, you can just leave this as default or even lower if you have to. Go to USB controller and we're going to choose show all USB input devices. So if you want to plug a USB stick in, it will detect it, which is very handy indeed. And then lastly, we click on hard disk and we're going to remove this. Once we've removed it, we're going to click add. Then we're going to choose the hard disk and click next. SATA recommended next and we're going to use an existing virtual disk. Once we do that, we're going to then locate the massive file that I have left in the description below. Now this is 30 gigabytes, it's absolutely massive. So obviously you'll probably have to wait for this to download. Like I said at the beginning of the video, make sure that you have everything downloaded in order to follow this tutorial. So we're gonna go ahead and choose OS X 10.11 El Capitan and hit open and then click finish, keep existing format and hit okay. Once we've done that, we can't power on the virtual machine just yet because it won't 
boot and it will just error out. So what we want to do is locate where the virtual machine's data is stored, which for my case is in documents, virtual machines, and then the name of the virtual machine that you called earlier, which in my case was called YouTube. Open the folder, look for the two kilobyte or three kilobyte file, and we're gonna edit this in a notepad of your choice. I'm gonna be using Notepad++. Once the text document is open, we're gonna to scroll to the bottom of the list and type in smc.version equals quotation marks and then zero. This is very important, otherwise the virtual machine will not boot whatsoever. So once you've placed that in there, hit save and we can go ahead and exit out of that. Now, if we're lucky, if we power on the virtual machine, this should boot successfully. And there we have it, guys. You can see the Apple logo in the middle of the screen and we're currently moving with the progress bar, which is always a good sign. So this may take a while, you just gotta be patient with it. It'll probably take us to the setup wizard to create an account and all of that good stuff. Okay guys, I've set up my account and successfully completed the setup wizard. Once you get to this page, you can go ahead and sign into your account. And there you have it guys, Mac OS X 10.11 El Capitan successfully installed on VMware Workstation. So there is a few things that you can do now and if you do not have a nice resolution, so for example, if I go full screen here, you can see that it does actually fit full screen and works fluently. But I know some of you guys may have trouble with this. Now there is a fix for this and it's very, very easy. So what you wanna do guys is click VM, go to removal devices, CD and SATA and click settings. When we get to this screen, you wanna click use ISO image file and browse to the VMware 12 series folder and go inside here and you'll see a folder called tools. Inside there is an ISO called Darwin, double click that and hit okay. You can now see that we have a VMware Tools guest wizard. So obviously install this and go through the procedure of installing the wizard. And this will basically fix a lot of issues like slowness, lagginess, and resolution fixes and stuff like that. So go ahead and click continue, install, wait for it to install, type in your password, continue installation. It will install all the packages that you need. It will ask you to reboot. Once rebooted, you'll have a successfully working El Capitan virtual machine. So like I said, Said earlier in the video I may make an updated video on a different virtual machine software and that's maybe VirtualBox or maybe some other ones that you guys use out there. But I hope I've helped you in a way. Comment, rate, subscribe and all that good stuff and I'll see you guys in the next one. Peace.